Hey everybody, Chris the Up North Air Gunner, and today we are going to be looking at the FX King 35 Cal. And this right here, I'm going to claim as the triple crown winner, the triple threat, because this thing just became the most versatile hunting tool that I have in my entire air gun collection. So let's check this out. Now, the story goes back quite a few months for me on this project. Because when the first FX Dynamic 700mm uh, um, barrel kit came to me and I did a lot of testing with that, check out my previous video on that, uh, on that rig, and that thing is just an absolute monster. So that gun is pushing over 200 foot-pounds of energy with heavy slugs. But I was sitting here in my studio the day that I got here, and I was actually getting ready for the archery season, so I was getting my compound bow ready. I had just gotten a, a new set of arrows back from the archery shop. So I got to thinking the Smooth Twist X barrels that are in these things really don't have a lot of aggressive rifling in them. And so I've done a lot of arrow testing with in-barrel arrow kits uh, in the past. And I just got to thinking, like, what happens if I were able just to take one of these Air Venturi arrows and stick it into that thing and pull the trigger and see what happens? Man, that gets there quick. <laughs> so in my testing in this, <laughs> obviously the power was there, but I really wanted to go down this like really deep dive rabbit hole with arrow-based technologies and really diving into the science of archery arrows and basically arrow profiles and stiffness and spines of the shaft and how that affects uh, arrow flight. So the problem with the 700 millimeter kit though is that that's such a long barrel they didn't sit all the way up against the uh, the transfer port. And so you had a lot of uh, space between the transfer port and the knock. So I wanted to make a custom arrow to shoot out of the 700 millimeter barrel kit to see what it would do. So I basically cut up all those brand new arrows that I had just gotten from the archery shop. So I, uh, I was able to pop off some of these uh, Air Venturi knocks and I was able to set that up on those arrows. So I went out to the range, and I was getting over 500 feet per second with these things. But what the problem with that though, is that the arrow length was so long and the spine stiffness is that you were getting a lot of arrow paradox. What that means is just the arrow is kind of bending in flight from all that pressure that's being imparted on the rear. And even though I was getting this crazy high amount of velocity and foot pounds of energy, it was just getting a little bit of a wobble and the um, the veins were doing a pretty decent job of keeping that straight. But that sent me down a path of just wanting to build out a prototype arrow that I knew that was stiff enough to be able to handle that uh, longer barrel length. So I went into RMAC. Actually, um, ironically, the very uh, same time of that trip was the Total Archery Challenge up here in Traverse City, Michigan was going on. So I swung by there. I talked to a lot of different uh, manufacturers. I actually met up with Boning, who are the uh, manufacturers of a lot of the, the veins that you see on a lot of the uh, hunting arrows that we have. I was telling them about my project. <laughs> so I got a lot of odd looks from people being at the Total Archery Challenge, um, showing them that I was shooting arrows out of an air gun. But the, the folks over at Boning were uh, super helpful. We talked about one of the veins that they have, which ironically was called the air vein that we uh, used as a prototype. So the entire time that I was at RMAC, I was actually sitting in my room with my brand new uh, Bitsenberger uh, fletching tool. I was building arrows when I should have been preparing for competition, but I was so obsessed about this project, I really wanted to figure this out. So in that process, I reached out to my friend, Andy Buchanan from uh, Thorn Archery, and we got talking about the project. And Andy is actually one of the only broadhead manufacturers in the space that has been focusing on air gun technologies and shooting arrows. And he's coming out with a brand new broadhead he wanted to show me. So I went out to North Carolina, I met with Andy and a lot of our testing. We basically came to the conclusion that the 500 millimeter barrel is the way to go. So the reason being is just having that shorter arrow is just inherently having a shorter arrow is gonna stiffen that up a bit. And so we uh, did a lot of testing out there. We hot rodded a dynamic with a tungsten hammer in this thing. And man, we were getting over 500 feet per second just with the 500 millimeter barrel kit. Brand new prototype arrow we've been working on here today. And oh boy, watch this. All right, here we go. Shot number one. Oh, 
119 foot pounds of energy. All right, last shot of the day, Andy, 509, over 220 foot-pounds of energy with Andy Buchanan here and Thorn Archery, Thorn Broadheads. So that was absolutely awesome, and Andy actually uh, gave me a set of these brand-new Thorn Titanium Terrors. These are a brand-new broadhead that he's coming out with that's specifically made for high-speed crossbows, air guns. You can even use them with compound bows. And it's the very first broadhead that's fully titanium to include the blades, so... No corrosion. You basically sharpen those things up. They're absolutely wicked. So after that testing, I came back here to snowy Traverse City, Michigan, and I reached out to Utah Air Guns. I said, hey, I want to run all of these same tests with these arrows, but I want to do it with just a bone stock king that just came out. So the FX king that has this beautiful GRS stock. So this right here now is my favorite dynamic platform. It's got the dynamic block, the dynamic valving system, the dynamic um, plenum here. And this is my new favorite because the ergonomic ability to adjust your uh, stock to be absolutely perfect. And it just looks beautiful. So I reached out to Utah Air Guns to talk to Justin. And I said, hey man, let's let's try this whole experiment out. But let's just use it as a bone stock FX King 35 cal 500 millimeter barrel. And let's just see what kind of performance we're going to get with these Air Venturi arrows. And I'll tell you what, check out these results because they are absolutely wicked. All right, so... Here's the data. We are averaging 460 feet per second, 10 shots, and I wasn't even at a full fill. We started at less than 250 bar. I'd probably get one or two more shots off of that, but yeah, that's over 10 shots per fill. So and that's without even tuning it. I've just got this thing wound all the way up. But uh, averaging 460 feet per second, <laughs> that's crazy. All right, so to load this up, I'm just using these uh, Air Venturi 35 cal arrows. And when you put it in, just get a little bit of a twist there and get those veins going. Just slides right in like that. And you're gonna have about that much sticking out here. And during all this testing, I actually found out a really unique way to use the uh, Element Hyper 7 scope. And so in this thing, it actually has something called a live BDC reticle, which is a like a bullet drop compensation reticle, very similar to what you'd see like in a crossbow uh, reticle. So I was able to figure out by entering all this data into the ballistic app from Element, it actually spit out a perfect, <laughs> perfect reticle and also ballistic uh, solution all the way out to 70 yards. So let's check that out. Nice. Just right, aiming right there in that V of the heart. Right there. I'm gonna call that good. All right, so I've got this backed out to 55 yards. Let's see what we'll do. Fifty five yards, exact same point of impact. This thing is just deadly accurate. Wow. And look at that penetration. Right in the V, right where I was aiming. Look at that penetration at fifty five yards absolutely wicked all right so now that we know that we can actually get over 460 feet per second just bone stock at only 145 bar regulated pressure being able to get over 10 shots with this thing i mean that power level is on par with my raven crossbow which just, just blows my mind but i said at the beginning of this video that this is the triple crown winner the triple threat so can it also be tuned for both hybrid slugs and pellets Let's check that out. So another cool feature about the Element Optics Hyper 7 scope is the ability to enter multiple profiles in the optic. And what this is, is you're using the Element Optics Ballistic app to create different ballistic solution profiles over multiple different projectiles. And when you send that to the scope, 
not only does it take that ballistic profile for that projectile, but it also remembers the zero that you had for that profile. So on the previous one, I was using profile four for the arrows. I'm using profile three for the hybrid slugs, and I'm setting up profile two for pellets. All right, so what is so crazy about this is I literally just took some FX hybrid slugs, 35 cal, 68 grain, put them into a magazine, popped them into the gun, didn't change a single thing on the power wheel or the pressure, and I set up a cardboard box out at 50 yards. I didn't even have my target camera set up because I was just trying to see if I was on paper. But check out this group, not touching a single thing right, with the power wheel or pressure. All right, so without touching anything, exact same tune that I had with the arrows, I am getting right around 904 feet per second on average, decent tune, standard deviation of three, sprite of seven, but yeah. <laughs> That group is nuts. Let's check that out. So again, 50 yards, didn't touch anything on the uh, power wheel or the micro adjuster. Just need to re-zero it. Five shots. <laughs> that is sick. All right, so you probably noticed that the FX King uh, at these very high power levels has a pretty big bark to it. So the shot report it is pretty loud, but with the new Dai FL Yokozuna, that was really awesome is they also make this in 35 cal. So the new quick detach system with this three lug attachment that basically just uh, attaches onto the end of your barrel there. So the Yokozuna quiets this down a ton. When we first got out there and I started testing this and I put this on, um, the shot report basically goes from the sound of almost like a 410 shotgun down to pretty much like a suppressed 22. So this is really, really quiets this down. Okay, so on this, I set out to see if I could actually find a tune staying right at 145 bar regulated pressure with the FX pellets. These are the 81 grain pellets, 35 cal, and in this testing right here, I will tell you that I had a, I struggled quite a bit to actually find this tune. And the reason being is I probably should have lowered the pressure a little bit and tried to find a little bit of a better balance between hammer spring tension and the regulated pressure because 145 bar was a little high. I think I probably should have brought it down to about 120, 130. But I finally was able to find a tune, uh, MOA group, but one of the things you'll notice with the FX dynamic valve is that if you are overpowering whatever projectiles you're shooting, you're going to see it in your group size. You can actually can hear it in the valve. Even in my previous video with Josh, I actually talked about the sound that the valve makes when you know it's it's in in harmony. You, hear, you almost hear like that metallic conk. What does it do again? Conk. <laughs> okay, can you make it? Baby! <laughs> an appropriate amount of excitement. Yeah. <laughs> this is the amount of excitement for somebody who doesn't run a KOL clean very often. <laughs> so you're really listening for that uh, <laughs> that sound of the valve. And once I was able to get there, I could hear it in the valve, and that group tightened up down to an MOA group at 50 yards. Oh yeah, that group. That's a lot better. So that was my first group here, just trying to get it on paper, just as a zero, but notice wide open. But uh, yeah, we've got four touching, one barely out. I'm gonna call that good. So after all of that testing, I wanted to get out and actually use this thing to hunt with. And unfortunately here in Michigan, it is not legal yet. I can go to a high fence ranch and do some hunting, but I actually wanted to get out and actually get out onto some um, private land and some public land. 
out in a state where it's legal to use these air gun arrow slingers. So if you check out the Air Gun Sporting Association, they have a full map of all the different states, regulations for all the different air gun hunting laws that are across the United States. And there's actually quite a few states now that are legalized this for during a rifle season. And so Maryland is one of those states. So my friend Chad Simon over at Lethal Air invited me to go on a Sika hunt, which is this like really small Japanese deer. It's not native uh, to the United States. But back in the early 1900s, they released a handful of these things, and now they're flourishing in the marshes of Maryland. So Chad and I went out there to uh, try to get one of these things down. It was late season. You know, it was kind of a Hail Mary if we would even be able to see anything. Got out there. I did see some white-tailed deer. Uh, I saw a lot of turkeys. I saw the biggest squirrel I think I've ever seen in my life. Come to find out this thing is like would be the most expensive squirrel if I were to have shot this thing because it's an endangered species or it was endangered, and but now it's a protected species. So I saw a lot of wildlife. It was pretty awesome, but I uh, did not get a shot. I did have one 50-yard shot on a whitetail I could have taken, but uh, I was there for Losica, so I passed on that shot. But on the way out of our hunting spot, um, I was driving down the road, and unfortunately, I actually saw one that had been injured on the side of the road, and I really wanted to uh, make sure we took care of that situation. Called the Department of Natural Resources, and um, I really wanted to be able to use my arrow slinger for a little, some little testing and get some uh, meat on the table, but they informed me that um, I was not allowed to do that. They had to take, go ahead and take care of that themselves. All right, so we've got our uh, good friends here, the conservation officers here from the state of Maryland. Uh, we just talked to them. Um, they're going to want to go ahead and dispatch this animal themselves, but uh, we're going to put the meat to good use. So, All right, so we got them all loaded up. Let's see what kind of uh, usable meat we've got. Back straps, inner loins will probably be okay. A little meat in the freezer, but uh, yeah, not how I wanted to do it, but... I did get a uh, tag to um, have this deer in my possession and I do not have to burn my tag. And so I'm gonna be able to go out uh, hunting tonight. So just remember, whenever you're in another state, this may be different from state to state. You definitely wanna make sure you contact the wildlife agency, tell them you know, if something like this happens or if you wanna claim a deer, uh, maybe you saw it get hit or you hit it yourself, like all the other deer that I hit there in Michigan. But uh, yeah, make sure you're staying legal and uh, these guys don't want to be on video, but we thank them for their service. And uh, yeah, you know, just, you know, make friends with your conservation officers in your local area. They are serving our communities. They are serving the hunting public and uh, the conservation of our wildlife game species is super critical for us to be able to go out and enjoy God's creation and have future opportunities like this. Uh, the cool part, though, was uh, Chad Simon from Lethal Air being just a master butcher <laughs> that he is. We were able to go out there and process that deer in the field and we were able to get some uh, meat to bring home. It was absolutely de delicious. So in all these testing, even though I did not get a shot off on a deer, I can tell you with 100% confidence that the power level that this thing is slinging at is at least, if not more, than my Raven R10X crossbow. So I did get a deer this year with those uh, titanium terrors with that. So definitely stay tuned for that video. But here is the results that I'm getting with those broadheads shooting at basically the exact same velocity that I'm getting with this thing. And man, those things are absolutely wicked. Full pass through, that deer did not go. 40 yards went down. So when I do get an animal in front of me, I know that this will be an absolute ethical method of take. But the beauty of this, and why I call this the most versatile hunting tool that I have in my entire air gun collection, is the fact that now I can slake arrows at deer or other big game animals. I can shoot slugs or pellets. So basically with the same regulated pressure and just a little bit of adjustment on your power wheel, you can get all three of these projectiles to shoot MOE groups in absolutely devastating ethical shots with this thing out to probably 70 yards. So I'm happy I'm able to finally share with you my results of this process. Definitely check these out from Utah Air Guns at the 500 millimeter barrel kit and the 35 cal king. Absolutely awesome. So again, if you enjoy my content and a lot of this uh, kind of R&D that I do, uh, please subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps me out. And I would love for you guys to post in the comments below anything you'd like to be able to see with the new FX King or any of the other air guns in my collection. Thanks for joining me. Take care.